Hey, what's up, everyone? Eric Ross of the Guy with the Eye here, and I have two big stories uh, to talk about. Two of the biggest things that have come out. Uh, you know, maybe not necessarily in the uh, the consumer price range of things, but it's something definitely worth talking about and thinking, you know, is it worth it? And just one really cool thing, especially from GoPro, I'm going to talk about Canon. Let's dive into this and see if maybe you've heard about these two topics or not. As I said, it's worthwhile to talk about. blew up everywhere after Canon admitted they're going to make a 250 megapixel CMOS sensor. Uh, they just said that I think last week, this is September 9th, that I'm making this video. So today if you're watching this, and essentially that's going to be used in really, really small sensors for like surveillance, which is going to be amazing, you know, for the cops or for stores if they're trying to catch someone. But then they, I guess they decided, hey, we need to put this in a DSLR. So they're actually going or they're thinking about making an 120 megapixel DSLR. Holy crapola. That is a, you know, a huge, you know, punch to pack type of thing. And I mean, overkill. Absolutely. You know, a lot of people don't know what to do with 24 to even 50 megapixels because just recently in the past few months, Canon has their 5DS, 5DSR, which is almost four grand and has the most DSLR megapixels at 50.6. Now it does okay in low light, but I mean, the detail you get is amazing. And that's on top of what already Nikon had before that, which is their Nikon D800, D810E, uh, those range of cameras. And you know, that ran about $3,000 as well. And that's about 36 point whatever megapixels. So we already have a high megapixel DSLR market, but I, but would we need 120 megapixels? I don't know. Now, the low light capability would absolutely be done. And I think essentially, primarily, this is a just a portrait camera. You, I don't think you would be able to shoot a wedding with this whatsoever. The read-write speed would be impossible. Could be a decent sports camera, but once again, the read-write would have to be amazing so you're not missing and the buffering might be an issue. But I, I, I definitely think that this is a studio camera where there's nothing fast moving, you know, if they decide to do that. But that's what they're saying, 120 megapixels. But let's just kind of compare price to things real quick. So the 5DSR, as I said, is about $4,000. It's a huge chunk of change for something like that. But I'm just going to go a little crazy. And I don't know 100% because I'm not familiar with Pentax a ton if this is their most you know, recent camera. But I think it is. And it's the Pentax 645Z, which is their full frame or their... I don't know, medium format, uh, 51.4 megapixel camera, and it costs $8,500. So where would this 120 megapixel thing reside? You know, I'm not too sure, but no one shoots a wedding with this thing. This is essentially just your studio camera. If you have a studio, uh, you know, headshots, you know, stuff like a Peter Hurley would do type of thing. That's almost nine grand. So where would this fall? probably somewhere in the middle, maybe about seven grand. So once again, that's speculation, we'll see. But this is one of the biggest things. Would you like a 120 megapixel DSLR? I'm fine with just my 12 pixels with my Nikon D700. Big story number one. Big story number two, GoPro will have a camera rig that costs $15,000. It's called the Odyssey Camera Rig, and essentially it's going to house 16 of... Uh, 16 GoPro Hero 4s. It's going to be like 8K uh, at 30 frames per second with everything combined. All are going to have different batteries. As I said, this is going to cost $15,000. And it's going to give you your 360 panorama type things. And they're appealing to the higher end market because there's a lot of junky, like the Ricoh 360 cameras out there that look like garbage. But as this article on Petapixel mentions here, and I'll link that down below as well so you can read more into this. Um, Google announced a jump thing that I didn't feel like talking about because I didn't think it was good because there's nothing for it that they're going to immerse more into the 360 virtual reality game and essentially where you can like have your smartphone and as you're moving it moves the screen or if you move the screen around if maybe you try this on YouTube you can get the full 360 panorama experience so you're getting the uh, you know so this is essentially what it's going to look like. And, you know, it has internal mic, which no one cares because GoPro sound is guff anyway. Um, and that's what you're going to get. You're going to get the 16, <laughs> 16 GoPro Hero 4 cameras, 16, I guess uh, they might be 16 gigabyte 
Uh, micro SD cards, they better be like 120 gigabytes for that damn price. You're going to get the backpack, you're going to get the Pelican case, and you're going to get the actual rig that weighs in about 15 pounds with everything on that. There's also a link, to, there's also a promo video that you should see. It, it does look kind of cool, but you know, the resolution is one of the best things compared to the other things out there, but it still doesn't blow me away. But it's $15,000, and if you have money that you can waste from someone, go check it out. So there it is. Those are the two biggest stories, and... I don't know. Give me your thoughts down below. Do we need a 120 megapixel DSLR? Does that really have any impact on the market whatsoever? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you would like one for your Ni 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 Nikon, Canon, Sony, because the next thing you'd get is a thousand megapixel from Sony that shoots 48K just because they can. Battery life's still bad though. Or grabs at the guy with the eye.